Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on code.org, we're in Unit 7, Lesson 3, Part 6. It says, try using this simple ordering app. The total with tax function has a bug. Find and fix it. It then tells us to add comments for each function using the format below. Let's go ahead and run the app just to see what we have. So if I click that hamburger, fries, fountain drink, if I click total, okay, we can see that it adds it up, but the total with taxes doesn't work. Let's go ahead and reset this and look over the code. So I see at the very beginning, I have an on-click event. We're gonna set text to this section of the screen. And what's it going to set? Well, it's gonna look to the total cost function. So we scroll down here. Within this function, we see that a variable called total is created set at zero. Within this function, a for loop is created. There's only five items within this list, so it's only going to look at this variable until the variable is less than the length of that. Each time this is run, one is added to that variable. Within this for loop, we do have an if statement. It's looking to see if the check at variable i has been checked. If you look at the app, each of these boxes is a different check. So it's looking to see is that checked as it runs through the list. If it is checked within that if, we're updating the variable total, and it's gonna be the total plus, says get number at cost i. And within the app, these numbers are labeled cost zero through four. So what this does is it checks through each of the check marks, and if it's checked, it's pulling in the total until it's done running. Once it's done running through that, it goes ahead and it takes that total that was just calculated and returns it back up here, and then that's spit out to the app. Our next on click event does the same thing. This time, it runs first to the total with tax, and that goes here, and it's passing the total cost function result into this. We see here that calculation, it's going to take the total and it's going to bring that amount plus this right here, the amount times the tax. As I look over this, the reason that there's an error in this is because it's not actually returning anything. The cool thing about how they set this function up is that it's already taking the calculation here. So we do not have to recreate this code to get the total of tax. We can use what's done here based upon how this was written make that second calculation and just return it. If we click show text, we go to return. If we type in total, that should fix our issue. Let's go in and run the app again. If we click total, we get our total before tax. If we click total with tax, we can see that that is calculated. The last part of this is that we just need to comment on our code. And what we can do, they've made it pretty easy for us, is we can just copy and paste this within our workspace. If I go to show text, and they want us to comment out each of the functions. The purpose of this first function is to calculate the total cost of the items that are being ordered. Our parameters, if we look above, it doesn't take any. And our return type, remember in here it's just calculating a number. So our return type, we can just change this to say number. Let's look to the next function and comment out that code as well. What does this function do? Well, it calculated the total price of the item selected with tax. What parameters are taken here? The parameter that's taken is the amount. The type is a number. And the explanation of the parameter is. And then what is it returning? It's returning another number, and the description is the amount of the item selected with tax. The fix to this app was pretty simple. We just needed to return the value that was calculated. 
an important piece of this that can get overlooked is commenting out your code. This is a practice that you want to make sure that you're doing. When you're done, make sure you click finish.